What's up, guys? It's Mr. Bringle, and today we're going to be talking about the Waves or Wave Basics concept builder from physicsclassroom.com. And we're going to start with the first trophy, which is two truths and a lie. So in this uh, trophy, what we have to do is we have to look at the three statements. Two of them are true. One is false. We are selecting the false statement. So, uh, okay, so number one says when a mechanical wave moves through a medium, the particles of the medium vibrate at about a fixed position. Number two says a fast wave is a wave that causes particles of the medium to quickly move from one end of the medium to the other end. And number three says all waves are created by vibrating objects. So hopefully the first one that you identify 100% as true is number three, uh, because all waves are caused by vib some vibration and um, hopefully that one is obvious to you. So you might be trying to figure out the difference between one and two and which one is true and which one is false. False. So uh, when things vibrate with a wave, uh, they don't actually move with the wave. Remember that energy is the only thing that moves with a wave. That's It's a disturbance that's caused, it moves energy through space, but it doesn't actually move the medium or the particles of the medium other than just vibrate them. So in a transverse wave, those particles move at a 90 degree angle to wave movement. So if a wave is traveling this direction, the particles will move 90 degree angle, so up and down in this case. Um, and so what you might think of is uh, if you put a rubber ducky in a little pool and then you create waves um, in the pool, what you'll see is that rubber ducky will actually just go up and down with the water. It's not actually moving side to side. Um, so having said that, this number one is true. The, the particles of the medium vibrate around a fixed position. And uh, number two is false. A fast wave is a wave that causes particles to move quickly from one end of the medium to the other. Um, now, on a, uh, I, I did leave out on a longitudinal wave. Longitudinal wave is more like a slinky. Uh, so if you pulse a slinky, you can kind of see that compression move through the slinky. Uh, but if you, you know, I think this one's more tangible. It's not actually that one of the rings on the slinky is moving from this end all the way down to that end, right? It's just that disturbance, that energy that moves through the slinky. But those rings always come back to the same position, right? They're going to vibrate, sure. They're going to this time vibrate parallel to the direction of wave movement. So if the wave's going this way, it's going to parallel back and forth horizontally, right? But they're always going to settle back to that same location that they started in. So they don't physically move. Okay, um, next one. Number one, a sound wave causes particles of air to travel from source uh, from the source of sound to the observer's ear. So we kind of just talked about that. Um, when a mechan Number two, when a mechanical wave moves through a medium, particles vibrate back and forth, but don't move from one location to another. Again, we just talked about that. Um, and number three, a wave transports energy through a medium without transporting material. Wow, so we just covered all of this in our, in our little chat there. So this is a quick one, right? We said, yes, waves transport energy. They don't transport the material. We said that, yes, um, when waves travel through a medium, the particles vibrate back and forth, but the particles themselves don't move from one location to another. But we did say that this was false, number one, that the particles actually do move. Um, remember those, those particles of air, they're bouncing into each other, right? Creating this vibration, chain reaction, uh, but they're not actually, it's not like the particles from my, that come out of my, var uh, my vocal cord right in the air, they travel all the way to everyone's ears. That's not how that works. Just the energy. Okay, and the third question here. So number one, a wave transports energy from the source to a distant location. That sounds pretty good. We've been talking about that. Number two, a wave moves through a medium because particle A pushes on particle B, which pushes on particle C, which with which pushes on, etc. And number three, when a wave moves through a medium, particles of the medium move along an undulating curved path from one end to another. So the common theme here is, is trying to get you to recognize that the particles do not actually move 
um, or, or they're not displaced, right? They move, they vibrate, but they end up in the same place. So one and two are talking about that. That's true. Number three is false. Alrighty here, matching pairs with the second trophy here. So um, we're going to match pairs here. So we'll kind of have to read through some of these. Um, so let's start with this one. This type of wave can move through a vacuum. So there's two main categories of waves in terms of how they or what they can move through. Um, a mechanical wave is something that requires a medium to travel through. So there has to be something there. A vacuum is like outer space. There's nothing out there, right? So the type of wave that um, an example of mechanical wave would be sound, right? There's no sound in space because there's no particles for the sound to move through. So mechanical wave is incorrect. However, an electromagnetic wave um, which hopefully you've looked at the EM spectrum, the electromagnetic spectrum. There's a number of waves on there that can travel through a vacuum or travel through outer space. Um, the, the best example is probably light, right? From the sun, light travels through outer space to get to earth. Well, it has to travel through a vacuum and light, a visible light ends up on the electromagnetic spectrum and therefore is a, a an electromagnetic wave, okay? Um, so let's go ahead and find the, the opposite to that, that matches up with mechanical wave, um, which would be this one right here, requires a material in order to move between the locations, right? So that's saying it requires a medium. There has to be something there for it to move through. So we'll check those. Great. Um, let's go ahead and look at this one. Particle motion and wave motion are parallel to each other. So we kind of talked about this in the last trophy, but uh, there's basically two types of waves, right? There's transverse waves and there's longitudinal waves. Transverse waves are the ones that you kind of think about that are like this, right? The longitudinal waves more like a slinky, okay? So if you think about the slinky, when you pulse the slinky, the rings of the slinky are going to vibrate back and forth like this. So the, the wave moves this way and the particles move parallel to the wave, okay? Versus with this one, notice, watch my wrist. My wrist is going down and then up, down, up, down, up. So on the transverse wave, uh, that one's going to be perpendicular 90 degree angle to wave travel. So we'll go ahead and choose parallel and longitudinal and we'll check that one. And then transverse and perpendicular go together. Data way. Let's get our trophy. All right. And wave anatomy here. So... Um, this one is asking us to measure the wavelength of the wave, and we are going to use um, this grid here. It does say that each square measures one centimeter along its edge. So first thing here is that we need to know what one wavelength is. Um, how do we even find that? And the way that we're going to do that is we're actually just going to go from a comp one compression over to another compression from the middle of the compression to the next. So basically every time you hit a compression, that's one wavelength. So each one of those lines there is one wavelength. Um, and you can do the same thing with the rarefactions. I just think it's easier to identify the compression. So what we're looking for here is we're actually looking for uh, the distance from right here to right here for one wavelength. And since it did tell us that each of those squares was one centimeter along its edge, since the, so this would be this right here would be one centimeter, two centimeters, three centimeters right there. So one wavelength is going to be three centimeters. We'll go ahead and check our answer. All right, great. And we'll erase that and we'll move on. Okay, this one says we've got a snapshot in time of a wave traveling through a slinky. Four locations along the slinky are labeled with a letter. Indicate whether these are crust, troughs, compressions, or rarefactions. So um, the crests are going to be the high points. So that's going to be locations A and B. Um, so we'll go ahead and look for crests here for A and B. And then the troughs are low points. And so that's going to be C and D. Now the compressions and rarefactions are gonna be found in 
uh, a different type of wave, right? This is a transverse wave. You're going to find the compressions and rarefactions in the uh, longitudinal wave, which we, I'm sure, will get an example of. Okay, so uh, it does want us to label this one as well. So uh, we just mentioned that, so this is a longitudinal wave. This one has compressions and rarefactions. The compressions are where things are squeezed together and it's very dense. So that's going to be, um, whoops, we'll skip A. We're actually looking for B as a compression and C as a compression. Now, A and D end up being rarefactions, which are the areas that are less dense and more spread apart. Okay, and again, we are, uh, so on this one, it says that we are indicating the direction of vibration of the slinky coils. So on this, if we're vibrating, you know, this is like taking a slinky and going like this with it, okay? So think about that. The rings of the slinky aren't actually moving. Like you're going to see the wave move down the, the slinky, but that's just energy. The slinky itself, if you tie a ribbon to one of the rings of the slinky and you go like this with it, it's just going to go up and down. So this, this position at A is going to vibrate down, and then it's going to vibrate up, okay? And really, it's at its lowest point right there. Um, it wouldn't go any lower. B would be doing the same thing. It's going to be vibrating up and down. And same thing with C, and same thing with D. So the answer to all of these is that each of those particles is going to vibrate vertically up and down. Okay, now this one wants us to measure wavelength and amplitude. Wavelength and amplitude. So um, wavelength here, with a couple different ways to measure it. Um, you can measure it from right here to right here. So this would be a wave going up. It goes back down, and then it has to end on another upswing there for it to be one wave. You could also measure from trough to trough or crest to crest. It does look like those are slightly off of one of those lines, which is why I think it would be nice to pick this right here. Uh, so each, each square is one centimeter. So this would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine centimeters of wavelength. Of course, it's not in order. And then amplitude, don't, don't uh, get tricked here. The most common misconception about amplitude is that it's from all the way at the top, the, up here where the crest is, to all the way at the bottom uh, down here. But wavelength, in fact, is only from the midline to a crest or the midline or the rest position uh, down to a trough. So it's only half that distance. So we can actually see right here that we've got uh, two squares. So we go up, there's one, there's two. So our, our amplitude is going to be two centimeters. Great. Okay. So this one is a slinky that has been pulsed. So think about two people holding the slinky, you pulse it, you pulse it, it creates these compressions that go through. So this is asking which direction do the particles vibrate in that case? Well, again, think about what's gonna happen if, if you tied a ribbon, like right here, uh, to this spot so that you could actually see it. What's going to happen with that ribbon when you pulse the slinky? Is it the ribbon itself going to move all the way down to the other end of the slinky? No. But what happens is it's going to it's going to go that way, and then it's going to bounce back, and it's going to come here. It's going to be vibrating back and forth until it eventually dies out, right? So each of these, doesn't matter what point you're looking at on, on this A, B, C, or D, all of these points are going to vibrate horizontally or parallel with the direction that the wave is traveling. So we will look for the horizontal. Now, I, I should be careful about using the word horizontal because technically it's parallel to the direction the wave travels. So if, if I was holding the slinky vertically and I did the same thing and I pulsed it, well, the wave is now moving vertically, so the particles would vibrate 
vertically. Um, so just be careful about that. Okay, great. So there's all three trophies. That's your Wave Basics Concept Builder. Uh, make sure to let me know if you have any questions.